To say Venom is popular is putting it mildly. After debuting as the new costume for Spider-Man, the symbiotic alien we'd come to know as Venom quickly became one of the most beloved members of Spider-Man's extensive gallery of foes. But here are some things you might have gotten wrong about Venom. Eddie Brock, the one and only? Venom made his, or maybe their, debut in 1988. The villain was a synthesis of two characters brought together to form the ultimate Spider-Man villain. One half was the alien symbiote that had formerly served as the Web Slinger's costume before Peter Parker realized that his new pants had a mind of their own. The other was disgraced journalist Eddie Brock, who also nurtured an intense hatred for Spider-Man. In the years since, Brock has been synonymous with Venom, but if you're under the impression that he was the only villain to use that name, you're very mistaken. While Brock was the original and current Venom, he's far from the only one. In 2004, when he found religion after seeing the Passion of the Christ, no, really, Brock auctioned off the symbiote costume to a new host. It was originally purchased for $100 million by Angelo Fortunato, the teenage son of a mob boss who wanted to impress his father and become famous enough that girls would write fan fiction about him. Unfortunately for Angelo, his tenure as Venom only lasted a single issue, but the symbiote stuck around. Next, it bonded to Mac Gargan, the spider foe previously known as Scorpion, who even used it to become the fake Spider-Man on Norman Osborn's team of Dark Avengers. After that, it was confiscated by the government and given to Peter Parker's former high school bully and decorated war hero Flash Thompson. With it, he became a one-man commando unit called Agent Venom. Eventually, though, it made its way back to Brock permanently. Well, for now. First things first. Eddie Brock was the original Venom, but before he bonded with the alien symbiote, its first victim host was Spider-Man. He was absolutely, totally the first Marvel superhero to bond with a black costume, right? Well, yes and no. If you're talking about our real-world timeline, then yes, that's exactly right. If you want to dive into the actual canon of the Marvel Universe, though, things are a little more complicated. It turns out that the first hero to wear the alien costume was… Deadpool? It's pretty weird considering that Deadpool made his first comic book appearance a few years after the costume debuted, but in 2015's Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars, it was revealed that he actually tagged along with the rest of the heroes to the Beyonder's live-action toy box. During the conflict, he was the first one to try on the symbiote, thinking it was a new set of clothes, but removed it after realizing it was alive, and he couldn't subject it to the pain of bonding with his own twisted thoughts. Secret Origins Speaking of secret wars, it's obvious that the black costume that would become Venom was created just for the event. After all, every Marvel comic saw huge changes for characters that had gone off to Battleworld, and for Spider-Man, it was a new costume that was clearly created for the crossover story. Except that it wasn't. Instead, the origins of the black costume come two years before Secret Wars, when a fan named Randy Schuler wrote Marvel with an idea for a story where Spider-Man would get a new black costume. In his idea, the new costume would be a high-tech update created by Mr. Fantastic. Jim Shooter, editor-in-chief of Marvel, liked the idea enough to pay Schuler $220 for it, but the proposed story never happened. Instead, Marvel kept Schuler's idea on the back burner until they found a place to use it. The only difference is that the suit had originally been pitched as being black with a red logo, and early designs released to promote the crossover show that the suit was originally intended to have Schuler's suggested color scheme before it was changed to black and white for the final version. A love-hate relationship one thing that can't be disputed about the Venom symbiote is that it has a deep and all-consuming hatred for Spider-Man. What other emotion could lead it to battle him so many times over the years? Could it be… love? Let's just say it's complicated. Rather than just wanting to keep feeding on him as a host, the symbiote seemed to have a sort of affection for Spidey, and even risked its own life to rescue Peter after he rejected the alien costume. It's made even more explicit in Amazing Spider-Man number 317. In a battle that went way past subtext, Peter was able to defeat Venom by, no joke, stripping down to his underwear on the beach and offering up his body to the alien costume while shouting things like, You want me? Then take me, I'm yours. It worked, too. Rather than sticking with its rebound, the symbiote fell for Spidey's Sim Booty call and knocked itself out trying to sever its connection to its current host. Who knew Venom was a villain who could be defeated by a you up text? Best Frenemies Whether motivated by love or hate, Venom is decidedly an enemy for Spider-Man, except when he's not. While he originally was introduced as an antagonist for the Web Slinger, his overwhelming popularity with fans led to a slightly different path. Aside from his original handful of appearances, the majority of Venom's most prominent moments involved him as a good guy, 
more or less. One of the biggest Spider-Man stories of the 90s, Maximum Carnage, saw Spider-Man and Venom teaming up to stop a bunch of villains led by a genocidal maniac bonded with a second symbiote named Carnage. Even more recently, the two characters teamed up again, and this time it was far from an uneasy alliance. Instead, when Norman Osborn bonded with a Carnage symbiote to become the Red Goblin and threatened to murder Spider-Man's entire supporting cast, Eddie Brock even went as far as loaning the symbiote costume to Peter Parker in order to give him the edge he needed to win the fight. That's a level of trust between them that goes well beyond the simple dynamic of arch enemies. I want to eat your brains. One of the long-running jokes about Venom is that he eats brains, a fact so ridiculous that, well, actually this one's completely true. Venom really does eat brains, it's just probably not for the reason you think. In 1996's Venom the Hunger, Eddie Brock found that the regular food he was eating tasted like sewage and decided instead to make good on his threat to snack on a few crook's brains. He was understandably horrified once he came to his senses, but the whole brain-eating thing wasn't just a shocking bit of cannibalism. Instead, it turned out to be a necessary craving for a chemical that existed inside the human brain. Fortunately, Eddie was able to control these cravings when he discovered that that same chemical existed in chocolate. Here's the best part, though. That's not just goofy comic book science. The chemical phenethylamine is a 100% real neurotransmitter found in both the central nervous system and in chocolate. It's a good reason to keep a Snickers on hand, just in case you run into any evil parasites out there. So many snacks for a little time.